Orbital Gardens, this is Mission Control. We are confirming acquisition of your signal. You are live in 5, 4, 3, 2... Hello and welcome to episode 37 of Gardeners of the Galaxy, the podcast for all of the sentient beings in the universe who have a passion for plants. I'm Emma the Space Gardener and I will be your host as we explore gardening on Earth and beyond. This is the first episode of 2022, so Happy New Year everybody. Did you get any seeds for Christmas? Ryan got me some chia seeds and some cress seeds for sprouting, which came with a new thing called soily, like a terracotta obelisk, about a foot tall with a honeycomb shape on the outside. It's hollow inside, and the idea is that you fill soily with water and it soaks through to the outside. You can grow plants on the outside of soily, and they'll cling to the terracotta and be kept damp by the water that seeps through from the inside. You can use soily to grow houseplants, and you have to use a rubber band to hold them on until they've got a grip. But I was most interested in soily because you can use it as a sprouter. There's enough moisture for surface tension to keep small seeds in place until they root and grab hold. The seedlings grow, and you can harvest them as microgreens, and then once you're done, the whole root system just peels off like a mat. You pop that in the compost and just start again. That's the theory anyway. Ryan and I are just trying it out now. The reason I wanted to try Soily is that since we heard from NASA's Christina Johnson about growing microgreens, which was episode 30, I've been trying to grow some of my own here on Earth. I had a kit for growing microgreens, which I'd had for ages, so I thought I would get it out and try. It's plastic trays and coconut fibre blocks that you rehydrate for the growing medium. And I had a whole bunch of different seeds to try, but my first efforts all ended the same way, with the seedlings going mouldy. They'd look fine one day, but I'd go and harvest them the next day, and they'd be mouldy. And then I was sent a kit to try that uses foam mats instead of coconut fibre. And I'm not a big fan of things that can't be recycled or composted, but I gave it a go. And the tray using the foam mat didn't develop mould, but it did dry out very quickly. So the seedlings look fine one day, but the next day were almost dead from drought. Microgreens are supposed to be the easiest thing to grow, and you'd think my decades of gardening experience would make it a doddle, but I'm really struggling, so I'm hoping Soily might make that easier. And I have dug out my old sprouting jars, and I have a tiered tray sprouter that I've had for years and never used, and I got that out and gave it a good wash, but then Christmas intervened, so soon I will try sprouting in trays as well. In the meantime, I thought I would talk to an old gardening pal of mine. His name is Mark Ridsdale-Smith, but he's better known as Vertical Veg Man. Mark is an expert in small space gardening, growing as much food as possible in a small space. And that's a topic that's universally popular, as people without a garden want to be able to grow food in their apartments or on their balcony. And small space gardening shares a lot of the same constraints as outer space gardening. Physical space is in short supply, and growers want to use as few resources as possible and recycle as much as possible. They don't want huge bills for lighting or water. And while lugging compost up to your apartment may not be quite as difficult as blasting it into space, the effort involved does focus the mind on resource use. But the benefits of gardening in small spaces here on Earth are the same as those in space. Gardeners can add fresh food to their diet with new flavours and extra nutrients, and they reap the psychological benefits of tending green plants and immersing themselves in nature's cycles. So Mark is here to talk about small space gardening, but before we get to that, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons for their support. From just a pound a month, you can join our community of space gardeners and support the show. Visit patreon.com forward slash gardeners of the galaxy to find out more. Hello, Mark. Welcome to Gardeners of the Galaxy. It's great to have you on the show. Hi. Hi, Emma. Nice to be here. (laughs) Uh, And we have met in person several years ago. um, So we're sort of gardening, online gardening buddies. So it's very, really nice for me to have you on the show and be able to talk to you today. So your history is that sort of quite a long time ago now, 2009, you started growing food on your balcony um, and that was in London and you got bitten by the bug and you started trying to grow as much food as possible in a small space. So what are the key things that you've learned from that experience? The key things I've learned, I think, partly is just giving it a a go, really, and getting started. Because when I started, I had really no experience of growing food at all um, apart from vague childhood memories uh, but I just thought I'd give it a go and was really quite surprised uh, by what was um, possible. I think one of the things I did learn when I was gardening in London is that there's a lot of things that are quite different when you're growing in the middle of the city 
in a small concrete space yeah. than there is to like growing in a big garden yeah. and a lot of the books and things that I read had a lot of like really useful information in them I learned masses from them but then there were lots of other things that they assumed that would be easy for me to do like make comfrey tea or whatever yes. uh, which I did manage to do on my balcony but I can't say it was particularly popular with the other members in the household when Ooh. I actually used it <laughs> Um, and there were lots of things like that. I mean, just the whole thing of like re, you know, you know, you just throw your compost away every year and buy a new bag. Well, actually, where am I going to put it? You know, yes. so there was a lot to learn from, from that perspective, but just, as I say, just giving it a go and not worrying too much when things inevitably went wrong, I think. Well. The main things yeah i mean the books all talk about the importance of composting and looking after your soil and things like that and if you've got no space it's just impossible isn't it i mean you can get a little tiny wormery but you're not going to be composting anything and everything are you it's just not feasible yeah well you can you can do a lot of composting with a wormery i mean wormeries are really really fantastic um so you can compost a lot of stuff it's just that you can't really when you've got uh, like a, a pot of tomatoes or something and you've used the compost you can't just throw the compost away there's no way you can put it you can't put it on a bed but you would in a garden yeah. so you either you have to reuse it or you have to put it in a bin bag and chuck <laughs> yeah. it out and obviously you don't want to put it in a bin bag and chuck it out so no that's really what i mean yeah. yeah so from those early days did you have some like favorite crops that grew really well for you in these small spaces i think that one of the first things that i did enjoy growing and had a lot of fun with. They weren't really big at that time, was microgreens, because oh. I used to go down to the local health food shop and buy a selection of their different pulses and herb seeds and bring them home and see which ones would grow. But at the time, that felt like really exciting. Like, all these spice <laughs> seeds, they grow. I'd never really realised that before. I mean, it's stupid, isn't it? But people yeah. don't really think that they are viable. Often they are our viable seeds um but then like a lot of um what else did we grow but were successful tomatoes were really fantastic uh runner beans do really well uh in containers uh lots of salad leaves lots of leafy stuff uh and chilies those are yeah. probably probably the main things yeah you said runner beans there were they what did you get the dwarf variety or was this one of the crops that you harvested up a ladder very much. I find like climbing varieties often are really best for small spaces because you get to make all that, you know, you actually get to make a lot of that, of that, uh, yeah. the vertical space. And uh, you can get like five to 10 kilos of runner beans off one container sometimes, uh, which is actually enough. For, you know, enough. Beans. Well, we yes. can't, we like runner beans and five to 10 kilos is actually enough. Plenty. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you've been gardening this way for a number of years now, and I know that you've been running courses and, and teaching other people this sort of philosophy. And now you have written a book, which is called The Vertical Veg Guide to Container Gardening, and that's being published by Chelsea Green. When's that coming out? 24th of March, officially, yes. Okay, something to look forward to there. And one of the things you mentioned in the book, and you have just mentioned them yourself, is is microgreens. So what are the benefits of growing microgreens? I mean, they're very popular these days, but as you say, when you started growing them, they were quite unusual. Yeah, so I think there's so many good reasons to grow microgreens, um, particularly in small spaces. They're just not ideally suited. So one is they don't really need a lot of sun, and a lot of urban spaces don't actually get a lot of sun. So they're a really good choice from that perspective. They grow really quickly, um, which is the advantage that if you have to go away for work for three weeks, if you leave your tomatoes, they're going to be dead. Yeah. But with microgreens, you can just fit, you can just grow them to fit in with when you're at home. They're also like really, really productive. So with sort of five or six trays, if you sow them regularly, you can pretty much be self-sufficient in salad. They're very productive. And then, as top of that, they're, they're really delicious. I and mean, then you can't buy them. I mean, if you can buy them, they're, they're very expensive. And there's a huge variety you can grow. I mean, I don't know how many, but there must be hundreds. But, I mean, there's 10, 20, 30 that are very easily available, readily available. And so you can just have a real diversity in a, in a small space as well. So for all those reasons, um, yeah, they're fantastic for small spaces. You said that there is a huge variety of microgreens available for gardeners. Do you have some personal favourites? 
Uh, yes. Um, this is always like when people ask you, <laughs> you always forget what they are. Um, the ones that I always grow are pea shoots, uh, fava shoots, sunflower shoots, mm. radish shoots in small quantities, nasturtium shoots, particularly oh, yeah. blue peep nasturtium because they're very, very pretty, and purple auric because it's just got the most fantastic colour. It does, doesn't it? And then coriander and basil. Fenugreek, actually. I often grow fenugreek as well. Uh, it's got a lovely flavour, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you grow yours outside? I grow nearly all of mine outside, which does mean that I am mostly growing them in the some from the spring yeah. to the... But having said that, it's amazing how hardy some of them... So things like pea shoots, I will often sow pea shoots outside in October, even the end of October. Yeah. And they will actually keep going all the way. If it's not really cold, they'll actually keep producing all through the winter. But outside, I always find it so much easier for all growing, really, because you've got that air movement, which does really help. What I do sometimes do is I start them inside because mice really like a lot of the seeds. Yeah. <laughs> and then once they come up, I move them outside. Although it did have slightly embarrassing when I did start some inside earlier this year and discovered that the mice still got them. <laughs> so I've got mice inside <laughs> as well as outside. But, um, yeah, so, so, so air movement obviously makes a big difference. But, I mean, one thing you can do and really makes a big difference is, is if you start them inside but then just take them outside the odd hour here and there I right. find just that the light gives them the extra strength and also you get the sort of air movement which I think really helps them so yeah if it's possible just to move them outside on a sunny day <laughs> that will help it'll be like hardening them off a little bit won't be I mean like like trotting them out in the morning and like bringing them back at night or something like yeah that. I've had a lot of success with pea shoots in 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 the past pea shoots I have no trouble with I haven't tried your your trick of of doing the same sort of thing with the fava beans yet um, I read that on your website many years ago I still keep meaning to try that <laughs> <laughs> it's just a case of having them, isn't it? If you've got them to hand, then it's sort of easy. I tend to grow them in either in seed trays or in, you know, those um, mushroom boxes that you yeah. get on market with got like, holes in them. I line those with newspaper. They're quite deep. And um, I just fill those with compost. Often it's used compost, but I add a little bit of fertilizer, worm compost or something like that into oh, them. Interesting. Okay. And yeah, so something like that, something like that, yeah. Yeah, so I would go them in more than a centimetre, I'd go them in like two inches. Yeah, no, I've had, I've sent some various microgreen kits to try at one point, and I I find I have much more success with my own, <laughs> with my own, just some normal compost in a tray, and, uh, and that's it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so actually, I'll go back to my gardening roots and do it yes. a, bit, a bit more organically, I might have some better luck. <laughs> So I don't know whether you were ever one of those children who longed to go into space and be an astronaut and whether you have anything spacey in your past. I should have brought it down to show you. I have a scrapbook from when I was aged five of, I think I might have even been younger, four or five when I cut out all the newspapers very badly, cut them out and stuck them in very badly into a scrapbook <laughs> uh, to show all the sp- first space landings. Yeah, Fabulous. You do have a bit of an interest in space travel then. I certainly did, and I still have a real fascination with space and black holes. And <laughs> <laughs> It's all very exciting, isn't it? Yeah. And you're standing in front of are those peppers that you've got on your windowsill there. They're chilies. They are chilies. Do you know that they've just been growing chilies on the International Space Station? I didn't, no. Yes, That's the, exciting. Uh, yes, they were the, the first sort of fruiting vegetables that, that NASA has grown in, in space, and it's been a real success. It's been amazing. Oh, great. Yes, these are, these are Arbota Locoto chilies, which ah, are, yes. they've got a slightly unusual leaf, but very fabulous. They've got such a, they're very thick skin, so you can't dry them, but they're hot, yeah. but with just a fantastic flavour to them. I really, just, we just love them. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. I'm not very good with chilies. I can't take the heat. Okay, so... If you had the opportunity to go out into space and join a community that was already there and had a greenhouse, it was growing all its own food, and you could take a personal plant with you, just for you, what would you choose and why? 
Well, I feel, seeing as what we've been talking about is microgreens, <laughs> I feel I really should choose the microgreen. And I think the thing I would take was pea shoots because that really felt that they were quite it was sort of instrumental, really, in my early food growing journey. And I think I would love them on a spaceship because you have to keep growing them, but that means you keep watching them out coming up and yeah. watching seeds germinate is one of the things I, I never really get tired of. I mean, just being able to harvest them and eating fresh pea shoots, I feel would be a wonderful addition to the astronaut's diet, which I have no idea what it is, but I imagine it's quite dry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and having some fresh green vegetables, and I love the flavour of them, would, uh, yeah, so I think I would have, I would take, I would take pea shoots. It would also remind me of a time when I remember travelling through London, I used to take a trace of pea shoots to events, and I remember like travelling on London buses, carrying this <laughs> long tray of um, pea shoots with people all looking at me and with inquiring faces. It was always quite fun. <laughs> I mean, L- London is quite cosmopolitan, and normally you can get away with most things without getting too many odd looks, but I imagine that was probably, yeah, triggering people's curiosity quite a bit. Nice looks, though. They, <laughs> the nice thing about plants is they don't tend to arouse sort of any, you know, it wasn't like taking your Rottweiler dog or something. It was, uh, they were very sort of friendly and inquiring, and I used to get in long conversations about how to grow them sort of randomly with people. So if you want to promote growing, just take a <laughs> tray of pea shoots around on the uh, London Underground and uh, you'll be off, yeah. <laughs> In one of the earlier episodes, I was talking to a scientist from NASA called Christina Johnson, and she's part of a team who is actually working on taking microgreens into space for the astronauts' diets, because as you say, they are um, a little bit pre-packaged and, and, you know, so they need something fresh to chew on. But what they're working on at the moment is how you harvest them in microgravity without them flying all over the place. And in actual fact, that she and her team have just done three flights on the zero gravity plane, the Vomit Comet, um, to test out this sort of harvesting idea that they've come up with. So yeah, I, <laughs> I can just imagine that might be quite tricky, but they are working on it. It is, it is an idea that's got some legs with NASA. Well, pea shoots, I think, would be easier than some because they're sort of like they grow bigger and you could actually get like a good handful with some <laughs> some scissors. I can see some of the smaller ones would be Very would tricky. be uh, yes. would be trickier, but I think they would be also the other thing about pea shoots is they're big enough you could actually just pluck them off and eat them <laughs> like one at a time for me. Stick the tray uh, to the table and everybody can just help themselves, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I often take them to to workshops um, with kids and kids who don't normally eat salads will often, they just love picking them and just stuffing them straight into their their mouths like locusts. (laughs) I mean, one of the things that I did want to do was address a lot of the issues that people have growing in small spaces like lack of sun and the cost of things and carrying compost, we're getting compost without a car. I mean, there are some amazing sort of parallels with space because, as I say, you you don't there isn't a lot of physical space on the space station to grow plants in, and they have the same trouble with you know not wanting to use resources and recycling everything, and obviously you can't really lug a lot of compost up into space. So actually, yeah. I mean, there are some really sort of pronounced parallels. Thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about microgreens and small space gardening. And I wish you all the best with your book. Thanks very much for having me, Emma. It's been it's been a real pleasure to chat to you. Thanks, Mark. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thanks again to Mark for coming on the show and talking about small space gardening here on Earth. His book is called The Vertical Veg Guide to Container Gardening. It's published by Chelsea Green and it's due out in the spring. The crew of the International Space Station also got some seeds for Christmas. Santa sent them a fresh delivery via a SpaceX Dragon rocket, which arrived just before Christmas. It carried four new gardening experiments, and three of them are already underway. Apex 07 is an Arabidopsis experiment that's set up in the veggie growing system. It's investigating how the spaceflight environment affects gene expression in plants. Spaceflight can change which genes turn on and off, the type and amount of proteins produced, and the modifications made to those proteins. MVP Plant 01 is another Arabidopsis experiment. It uses Redwire's multi-use variable gravity platform and is designed to investigate how the stresses of the spaceflight environment affect plants. 
and after the recent harvest of the first space chilies, the advanced plant habitat has been cleaned and kitted out for a new experiment. Plant Habitat 05 is looking into whether the space environment could make it easier to develop new varieties of cotton, a slow process on Earth. Those are the three new experiments that are already underway. The fourth experiment is Veggie Pond 03R, and when it gets its turn in the veggie growing system, it will be growing Mitsuna in the passive orbital nutrient delivery system, Ponds, which is hardware developed originally by Tupperware Brands. There's more details of those experiments and some pictures on the website, which is theunconventionalgardener.com. That's also where you'll find the show notes for this episode with links to Mark's social media accounts. And that's it for this episode. I'll be back with a new crop of astrobotany in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, don't forget you can sign up to support the show at patreon.com forward slash gardeners of the galaxy. And I'm still posting daily space gardening photos on social media. You can find me at Orbital Gardens on Twitter and Instagram, and Gardeners of the Galaxy has its own Facebook page. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Orbital Gardens is mission control. We're confirming termination of your signal. The ground control team would like you to rerun the radish cropping experiment. Apparently there was a bit of a mix-up with the samples you sent down and the technicians had them for lunch. They did say to tell you they were very tasty. Mission control out.